I was raised by oh, a small businessman father, and you know he used to say, when you work, work hard, when you play, play hard, and don't confuse the two. So I believe in individual responsibility and self-sufficiency and all the rest of it, but I also recognize how lucky I am, people like us are, because the luck of the draw, how we were raised, how we were educated, um, how we have acquired skills that enable us to be quite flexible within our own economy and the global economy, that has not been true for a lot of really hardworking, decent people in our country. And I think it's, as I said in the beginning, also happening in other advanced economies. For people who are just out of school and are carrying enormous debt loads, we just did a survey recently and 60% of students that we had surveyed or recent grads said that they had student debt and the median was twenty to $25,000. 13% at over $50,000 in debt. These are people who, when they go to look for jobs, they can't find jobs with purpose. They have to do something that will actually keep paying off their student loans. It's outrageous that we have people who are paying interest rates, seven, eight, 10, 12, 14% at a time when you know, we've been at the bottom, in, a, in effect, negative interest rates uh, for a lot of things. Why is this happening and why is the federal government allowing this to happen? It is wrong. I got out of law school with debt and I had one of these income-based repayment plans. That's why I could go to work for the Children's Defense Fund and make very little money, why I could teach law at the University of Arkansas Law School and make very little money because I could afford to take a job I wanted to do to pay back my loans as a percentage of that income. You travel around the country, you travel around the world. Are there any people that you look to right now where you say, this is a future leader that I rely on? Are there, who is the, the Hillary Clinton of today that you look <laughs> yeah. to and say, you're it, I'm, I'm gonna follow you, I'm gonna watch what you have to say? I have to tell you, there are so many impressive young office holders, and the ones I know are predominantly, but not exclusively, Democrats. I was at the mayor's conference in Indianapolis, and the mayors are getting things done. They are tackling problems. They're asking for a little more support from the federal government to be able to tackle everything from uh, poverty and preschool to policing and diversionary programs and development programs. But they are really out there working. I was in Cincinnati after I was in Indianapolis, and I was meeting with the uh, mayor there. They brought together a public-private partnership and they used a program my husband started as president called the New Markets Tax Credit to really drive private sector investment into a very depressed neighborhood and to try to keep the housing available and to try to clean up and, and make the public spaces more attractive. And they're beginning to see restaurants and coffee shops and other retail establishments. I can go around the country, and if we had time, I could talk about what the mayor of Philadelphia just did with a, a soda tax to fund preschool. Or I could talk about what the mayor of Boston is doing to deal head on with addiction because he's a very uh, forthright, recovered alcoholic. I could talk about what's happening in uh, Austin, Texas, where you've got a bright, a uh, really innovative uh, mayor trying to work out how you deal with the explosion of growth so that people don't feel like Austin's no longer weird, which is what they want to be, or the mayor of LA uh, who is so great at bringing communities together and talking about how immigrants are on the front line of protecting America. I could really go on and on. We should do a, another whole interview about this, Dan, because there is a cadre of state legislators of uh, state office holders, of people who are mayors, uh, who are on the front lines of change that I am really excited about because we've been paralyzed, gridlocked in Washington, which is heartbreaking because we're the best problem solvers in the world, we Americans. So I know that what's happening at the local and state level is where we're gonna have to look for good ideas and try to take it to scale.